Gaming and leisure properties has beat the market, returning almost 20% to shareholders in the last year. But can they keep this market beating performance going? We're analyzing gaming and leisure's properties, stock ticker GLPI, to see if its market price is a fair value. We're using the Select 6 analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating an intrinsic value for gaming and leisure properties. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. There will be a key bonus metric along the way that just might be the tipping point when analyzing gaming and leisure properties for your portfolio. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand gaming and leisure's property stock performance. Now, Gaming and Leisure Properties, or GLP, trades for $49.10 per share. In the last year, their stock price is up 13.5%. Right now, the company pays a 5.77% dividend yield. Their dividend yield is in addition to these returns. GLP's stock price is compounding at 7.5% annually over the last five years. Going back to when the business was listed nine and a half years ago, gaming and leisure property stock price is up 11% overall, again with their dividend yield being in addition to these returns. Gaming and leisure properties trades in between their 52 week high and low, one and a half percent of their shares are sold short. GLP is a large business, they have a nearly $13 billion market cap. But why should we be paying close attention to GLP? Gaming and Leisure Properties Inc. or GLP is a real estate investment property trust primarily involved in the leasing of gaming and related facilities to wholly owned subsidiaries of Penn National Gaming or Penn throughout the United States. GLP segments its operations into GLP capital and TRS properties, the company derives the vast majority of its revenue from its GLP capital unit in the form of rental income from dockside and land-based casinos located mostly in the American Midwest. Almost all of GLP's capital leases are long-term agreements that give Penn the option for future extensions. Gaming revenue generated by TRS properties, which encompasses the operations of Hollywood Casino Perryville and Hollywood Casino Baton Rouge, also represent a significant income stream for GLP. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on equity in the last five years to be above 12%. A typical REIT earns about a 6% return on equity. Looking for double this allows us to build in margin of safety based off the quality of the business. GLP has increased their returns on equity throughout this time. Averaged out in the last five years, GLP earns about 18% returns on equity in a given year. This is a big check on metric number one for the business. In metric number two, we're looking at the business's growth. Here we're looking for growth in their revenues and their cash from operations in the last five years. During this time, GLP has grown their revenues by 28%. Their cash from operations have increased faster than this, growing at 42%. This is another check on metric number two. Metric number three, we get to see one of the ways the company has fueled its growth. We're looking for decreasing shares outstanding in the last five years. Many REITs tend to be externally funded, meaning they rely on issuing new shares or issuing debt in order to raise funding. GLP is no exception. During the last five years, the company has increased their shares outstanding by 20%. A lot of the shareholder dilution has come since 2020, with most of it coming in 2021 and 2022. Because their shares outstanding are up, this is an X on metric number three. Putting our previous couple of metrics together, we're looking for cash flow per share growth in the last five years for GLP. Their cash from operations have grown by 42% during this time, which outpaces their 20% shareholder dilution. Because their free cash flows have grown faster, this means their free cash flows per share are up in the last five years. This is a check on metric number four. With the check here, recapping where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we have three checks and only one X for GLP. Metric number five, we're evaluating how the business uses debt. During economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are at the greatest risks of poor outcomes. We want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of cash from operations the company has produced in their last five years. GLP ended their most recent fiscal year with $6.1 billion worth of net debt. Right now, they have $6.5 billion in net debt. And in the last five years, the company has only produced $3.5 billion worth of free cash flow. While their free cash cash flows are up in their most recent couple of fiscal years. Their free cash flows are just over half of their net debt position, meaning this is an X on metric number five. This may or may not be a potential concern here. You'd want to dig into the company's filings to understand this in more depth, where they'll break out how this debt is structured, when it matures, what rates it's at, and if there are covenants associated with it. That's something to research in more detail. 
The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average cash from operations to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this provides a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It may offer a reasonable starting point for evaluation of GLP. In their last five years, GLP produced $3.5 billion in cash from operations, meaning in an average year, they produce about $700 million in cash from operations. Right now, the company has a $19.8 billion total enterprise value, which takes into account their net debt position and their market cap, giving a perspective of GLP similar to it being a private business. When we divide their $700 million of their average cash from operations by their $19.8 billion total enterprise value, that gives about a 3.5% average cash from operations to enterprise value yield. In their last 12 months, the company produced $928 million in cash from operations. When that's divided by their $19.8 billion total enterprise value, that gives us about a 4.6% current cash from operations to enterprise value yield. Both of these yields are coming in slightly above the yield of the 10-year treasury, but they're down from that risk premium we'd be seeking, meaning this is an X on metric number six. Don't throw this business out, however. This is not financial advice. There's more work to be done to come to a more concrete estimate of a fair stock price for GLP. But first, let's not forget about our bonus. As our bonus, we're looking at GLP's dividend profile. Right now, GLP pays a 5.77% dividend yield. This is much higher than the dividend yield from an S&P 500 ETF. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. It's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business. We want GLP's dividends to be supported by their free cash flows. Throughout this time, the company has both grown their dividends and their free cash flows. They've supported their dividend payouts in four of these last five years using their free cash flows loan and gaming and leisure properties has paid out a special dividend both in their fiscal 2021 and recently in 2023 as well. While 2020 was the major hit here to their dividend profile, this is a snapshot of their last five years of performance. It's no guarantee for the future. Right now, it looks like GLP's dividends are supported by their cash flows. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Gaming and Leisure Properties Inc., which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to an estimate of GLP's fair stock price. A discounted cash flow model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. We're starting with a three-year average of GLP's free cash flows, then using historical assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these assumptions are accurate and applicable going forward for the business. Assuming they grow their three-year free cash flows at a rate of 5.6% annually for the next 10 years, then assuming that these grow at 4% annually from the 10 years from there. If we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives an estimate of their net worth, if we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return Warren Buffett is looking for from his investments, in addition to his margin of safety requirements, at today's valuation, an estimate of gaming and leisure properties fair stock price is around $38 per share. That's down $11 from the company's current stock price meaning that the company looks like it does not have a margin of safety relative to its fair intrinsic value today. However, there are key factors to be mindful of. GLP has not been a very predictable business in its past. This is partially due to fluctuations in the company's growth and how they've grown through issuing shares and making acquisitions. Also, this 15% discount rate, which estimates total returns to shareholders, is already including the company's 5.77% dividend yield, so we would not be doubly counting their dividends. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with a financial advisor before making any investment decision. Now it's time to give our final rating to GLP. In analyzing gaming and leisure properties, stock ticker GLPI, we learn the company earns very high returns on equity, averaging about 18%, nearly three times better than a typical REIT. The company has moderately grown their revenues and their cash from operations in the last five years, but they've diluted existing shareholders by 20% to fuel this growth. They've also taken on some more debt, which doesn't look like it's supported by either their current or their average cash from operations. On both a current and an average basis of their cash from operations to their energy enterprise value yields. Those were coming in above the yield of the 10-year treasury, but below the slight risk premium we'd be seeking. GLP has grown their dividends in the last five years, although they haven't grown steadily in all five years. They've been supported by their cash flows in four of these five years. The company has issued special dividends in two of the last three years, including so far in 2023. 
It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. When performing our discounted cash flow analysis, from today's valuations if you are seeking a 15% rate of return, an estimate of gaming and leisure's fair intrinsic value is around $38 per share. The company was last at those levels in October of 2020. Combining the factors of our analysis, GLP looks like a moderate candidate for further research. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, comment down below what business you want me to look at next time. Thanks for learning about gaming and leisure properties with me, and have a great day.